Now, my next guest's career has, t has seen him star on, on stage and on screen. He will always, of course, be remembered as the king of Saturday Night Telly. You're like, wow! I know, it's <laughs> like watching my life flash before my eyes. And a baby Ross King. There was a baby Ross King in there. I know, doesn't he look great? It he still does. looks good. He still looks very, very good. Now, they tried to bring it back, Stars yeah. in Your Eyes. I think they should, yeah. but the way that you did it. Because I love the way that you treated every single contestant as that star. They were uh, treated like that star. Yes, you, you know, that was... Uh, and what it was was that they were doing all the work and I was getting all the money. <laughs> It was a win-win. For that, it's wonderful. Yeah, because it was about them and yeah, it was about getting was, them through the door. I love that. I love that they used to be on the dressing room. If somebody was impersonating Frank Sinatra, it'd be so, you know, Cher, it'd be so Carol Boardman and Cher, she'd be Cher all day. She'd be oh, yeah, Cher. Yeah. That was it. They were yeah. treated like princes and princesses. It would I be... know, but the whole crew, I mean, it was a big Manchester show and the whole crew just were great with the contestants yeah. because it was trying to get them to give the performance of their totally, lives. Totally, which they did. they did. Now, look, you have been one of the few people that can go from that kind of really brilliant show that actually is pretty difficult to do, but from that to acting, really straight acting, and sometimes you've been really awful and horrible. <laughs> like some of the roles. I mean, you've been at Cold Blood. That was terrifying. You've been playing a serial killer. Yeah. Yes, yeah, amazing yeah, but that. You, you know. But it was, you were just so, you got it immediately. I used to be fascinated by serial killers, mm. and uh, I, I just had a thing about it. But when I played one, I lost my fascination for it. Isn't okay. that strange? No, I get Although it. I still watch documentaries about it. Of course, I think we've all got that fascination, haven't but, we? We always find out what on earth makes them tick. Uh, yes, and that lack mm. of empathy, there's something missing, sure. you know, with them. And uh, so I was interested in that, so long as you don't have to look at the victims. Yeah. If you just take the killer and what, mm. you know... No, I understand. Have a look at that you, side. Exactly it's a psychological you thing, exactly. you know. But I now, look, tell it. me about this new role on stage, which, again, as you always do, there's always a challenge when it comes to you. The habit of art. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, he's great. I'm playing two parts in The Habit of Art by Alan Bennett, right, which is going back on tour. It went out uh, in 2018. It's going back, coming back again. Right. Uh, this year for another 12 weeks around this country uh, uh, before it goes to New York. And I'm playing uh, an actor called Fitz, because it's a play within a play, right. and Fitz is playing W.H. Auden, the poet, who ah. has a fictitious meeting right. with Benjamin Britten, the composer. Oh, cool! And it's because it's Alan Bennett. Oh, it'd be it's, great, it'd be funny, it's droll. It's very warm, it's very witty, yeah. it's very... It's, it's funny, but it's also very moving. Mm. Because it has to be a fictitious meeting, because the two of them used to work together, and Benjamin Britten um, fell out with W.H. Auden right. very badly. And uh, in the uh, 60s, mm. actually. Uh, and they never met again, because once Benjamin Britten had fallen out with oh, somebody... was that it? That was it. They were dead to him. No uh, way back. No way no back. Way. And the problem with W.H. Auden was he became too famous for himself. And so he never really produced the work that he had done in his youth. Ah. Uh, and he was desperate to, to do work because he became shackled by his reputation. The dresser, you and Julian Cleary, yes. perfect, pitch-perfect casting. So it when is this all happening? Well, when we... When we Look, get... already we have pictures. Oh, yes. And if you, I don't know if you've seen the movie. I remember the movie vividly. I thought it was incredible. And it's yeah. this old thespian... Yes. And the person who dresses them, and their relationship yes. is so interesting. Sir and Norman, Sir the and dresser. Norman. Yes. And the great thing about it is when I, people say, oh, what are you doing? And I say, well, I'm going to do the dresser with Julian Clary. And they go, Julian Clary? Oh, how much? <laughs> and I go, yes, he is lovely, but then I'm in it as well, <laughs> you know. Yes, I'll, I'll be there. <laughs> But I'll be he there. is. Oh, I can't wait to see this. He is such a dear man, and he he actually is the dresser. Right. He, yeah. He'll he'll be absolutely great in it, you know. Yeah. Because he's he's lovely to work with. He's and he's nothing like you think he's going to be. He's he's very shy and self-effacing. Oh. And I've seen him with an audience, and he's so warm, and he draws people in, and. Um, I, I think he might have a problem with his audience expectation. Because yeah, they might expect him to break the wall and actually tell jokes yes, but, that it's not. But I know he won't. No, because, and no. anyway, he doesn't need to because the writing by Ronald Harwood is so kind mm. and so beautifully observed. And it's about two people who are desperate, one at the end of his life, 
Mm. Actually, I don't, this is a bit of a spoiler. I do die on stage, <laughs> which is one of my favourite things, actually, because it means you don't have to finish the play. Well, that's Just wait true. around for everybody else to do it, and then you so take exciting. a big bow at the end like you've done the lot, you know? <laughs> your energy, your enthusiasm, <laughs> your optimism, all of these things, and I cannot believe you're going to be 70 soon. <gasps> Darling, I'm going to be 70 in Croydon. Oh, on right. a Saturday night okay. doing two shows. Right. So I'm going to celebrate in when we go to New York. Ah. Uh... Because one of the girls in the show, Veronica Roberts, who... Now, oh, now, get this. Me and Veronica, we used to be in uh, Chester Gateway Theatre and we did a tour of The Knack 48 years ago and we didn't work together again for 46 years. And you know what? I... It was like the next day of our relationship. Right. And people, she looks exactly the same to me. <laughs> and somebody said to me, you know why people look the same? Is their smile. Their smile never changes. That's true. So, That's you true. know, we might all be old and have a leg at each corner now, but, you know, our smiles... <laughs> are still our smiles same. are still the same, Except, aren't you? except I bought this smile. <laughs> it was well, really it, expensive. very, very Thank good. Very it was now. well worth it, it really was. Great to talk to you. Come back and see me real soon. The Habit of Art begins on the 18th of March. It does, in uh, Eastbourne, Eastbourne, and then it goes yes. to Cheltenham and Bath and, all, well, all over the country, Edinburgh. Um, you know. And then we can look forward also to The Dresser later on this year. The Dresser, yeah, in, in uh, many of the same places. I'm in the <laughs> spring season and autumn season of most theatres <laughs> near you. Never stop doing what you're doing. Never oh, you're stop. Lovely. Thank you so much, Matthew.